Aggregate is part of Open Data Kit's suite of data collection tools that aggregates collected information into a central repository. Aggregate provides a simple web interface capable of primitive data analysis along with the ability to move your collected data to more sophisticated data analysis software. Aggregate is meant to help bridge the gap between mobile data collection tools and the sophisticated data analysis software needed to derive complex results. There are three main features of ODK Aggregate, Visualize, Export, and publish. Visualize allows you to view your data in a pie chart, bar graph, or on a map. Export allows you to put your data into a CSV file for Excel or a KML file for Google Maps. Publish allows you to stream your data to Google Fusion Tables, Google Spreadsheets, Forms are descriptions of how your data will be organized. A form is the basic building block of aggregate. The form organization is what produces the columns for your data rows. To upload any data to aggregate, you will first need to create and upload a form. When you navigate to the main aggregate page, form results will automatically be displayed. When you install aggregate, you will notice that there are no forms displayed on the submission page because no forms have been uploaded. To add a form, you will need to navigate to the Form Management tab. Once on the Form Management tab, click on the New Form button and a pop-up will appear that will allow you to upload your form. The form definition is the XML file that specifies how to organize your data. This is a required file. Simply click the Browse button to choose your XML file. Additionally, if media files are included in your form, you can specify them in the second file selection box. Media files are usually photo to improve question prompts that will make the form more user friendly. These files are optional. Once your files are specified, click the upload form button. When it is complete, you can close the window. Notice you can view the list of uploaded forms on the form management tab. Once the form is loaded, data collectors will be able to use programs such as ODK Collect to submit data to aggregate. Here is an example of what the data will look like after the form is loaded and data has been submitted. Filters give you the ability to explore a subset of your form's data. You can either specify Row filters or column filters to reduce the number of submission values shown. Row filters reduce the number of submissions shown based on selected data criteria. Column filters reduce the number of columns shown. If, for example, you are only interested in the location name and picture for each data point, you will want to create a column filter to hide unnecessary columns. To create a column filter, click on the Add Filter button, which will cause a pop-up to appear that will allow you to specify your column filter. The first drop-down specifies whether to display or hide the selected columns. In this case, we want to display only the two columns we want to view. The second drop-down specifies whether to create a row or column filter. Since we want to hide unnecessary columns, we select Column Filter. The third drop-down specifies the columns to control. We can select multiple columns by clicking the first column, then holding down control and clicking the second column. Notice that the boxes read as a sentence that describes the filter. Keep columns followed by the two columns we want to keep. After verifying the sentence is accurate, we click Apply Filter. Notice how only a portion of the data in the table is shown. The data is not lost and is only hidden. If you want to remove the filter, all you need to do is press the red X next to the filter. If, for example, you want to look at submissions that have a location number greater than 5, you will need to create a row filter. To create a row filter, click on Add Filter button, which will cause a pop-up to appear that will allow you to specify your row filter. The first drop-down specifies whether to display or hide the selected rows. In this case, we want to display rows greater than 5. The second drop-down specifies whether to create a row or column filter. Since we want to filter on values, we select a row. The third drop-down specifies the name of the column that contains the data that will be evaluated. In this case, we want to filter on the location number. 
The fourth drop down specifies how the data should be evaluated. Since we want the location number to be greater than five, we select greater than. Then we need to enter the evaluation criteria for the filter in the text box. In this example, the value should be five since we only want rows with a location number greater than five. Notice that the boxes read as a sentence that describes the filter. Display rows were column location number greater than five. After verifying the sentence is accurate, we click Apply Filter. Notice how only a portion of the data is shown in the table. The data is not lost, it is only hidden. If you want to remove a filter, all you need to do is press the red X next to the filter. After creating filters, we may want to save the set of filters for future work. The set of filters displayed in the left-hand part of the screen is called a filter group. This grouping makes it easy for users to apply several filters at once. It is also possible to save our filter group, allowing us to easily replicate our work in the future by applying the pre-existing save filter group. A filter group is simply a group of filters saved together with the name you pick. To save the current set of filters, click the Save button. Next, in a, fill in the desired name and press OK. If you want to switch to a different filter group, simply click on the filter drop-down list and select one of the other safe filter groups. Also, if you would like to have no filters applied and begin with a clean slate, select none from the filter drop-down list. If you decide at some point you don't want a filter group anymore, select the filter group from the drop-down list and then press delete. Exporting allows you to take your collected data and put it into a format that is compatible with other software tools that you may already be using. Aggregate has export buttons on several tabs to make it convenient to access the functionality. Currently, Aggregate allows you to export your data to a CSV file that can be used with statistics programs such as Excel or to a KML file that can be used with mapping visualization programs such as Google Maps. As an example, we will first export the filtered data to a spreadsheet. To create a CSV, click on the Export button, which will cause a pop-up to appear. Notice that the form and filter group have already been selected based on the current filter group being viewed on the Filter Submissions tab. The first drop-down specifies the type of export to generate. In this case, we want to generate a CSV. The second drop-down specifies which filter group to apply. If we want to generate a CSV with all the data, we simply select None. We can now press Export to generate the CSV file. Once generation starts, Aggregate will automatically take you to the Export Submissions tab. This page allows you to view the progress of the export file generation. Once completed, you can click on the link to view the file. The other option we have is to export the data into a format known as KML. KML is a format used to specify how data points should be placed on a map. Once you select the KML as the type of export you want, you will notice that three more drop-down boxes become enabled on the export pop-up. The first drop-down specifies the column that contains the geographical data or the GPS points. Since the location is the only viable option in this form, is the only option that appears. The KML format will create pop-up balloons on a map. The remaining two options allow you to specify how the pop-up balloon should look. The second drop-down specifies what column should be used as the title. In this case, we would like to use the description as the title. The third drop-down specifies what image will appear on the map. In this case, we would like to use the location picture as the image to be displayed. We can now press Export to generate a KML file. Publish gives you the option of having Aggregate automatically forward your data to another web service. Currently, Aggregate supports moving your data to either Google Fusion Tables, Google Spreadsheets, or a JSON server. Like Export, you can access Publish functionality from multiple screens. To publish data to another web service, click on the Publish button. This will cause a pop-up to appear. First, we'll demonstrate uploading data to Google Fusion Tables. Notice that the form has already been selected based on the Publish button we chose to click on. The first drop-down in the pop-up specifies the web service to send the data to. In this case, we want to publish our data to Google Fusion Tables. The text box is grayed out because it is not used for 
Google Fusion tables. The second drop-down specifies the types of publishing you want Aggregate to perform. You can choose to upload only, stream only, or both. Upload existing submission data only means that Aggregate will send the current data to the web service but will not continue to send data after it finishes. Stream new submission data only means that Aggregate will only send new data after the web service is created. No old data will be sent. Both uploading existing and stream new submission data means that Aggregate will send both old and new data. Since we only want to send data that is already in Aggregate, we will choose upload existing submission data only. We now click on publish to send data to the remote server. Note, you will be redirected to a web page because you must give Aggregate permission to make a Fusion table under your account. To view the published document, we will navigate to the Published Data Information page. Once the status is active, it is ready to view. You can view your published document by clicking on the link. If you need assistance, there are different levels of help ranging from high-level overviews to detailed directions. Aggregate has three different levels of assistance that are controlled by the three buttons in the upper right-hand corner. The first button, which is a red question mark, will give you instructions for the tab you are currently viewing. When you click the button, a help panel will appear at the bottom of the screen. To hide the help panel, simply click the red question mark again. The second button, which is a green book, will give you the most comprehensive help. When you click the button, a pop-up will appear providing detailed information as well as video instruction. Click the red X to close the window. Finally, you will notice that when you hover over most buttons, a small piece of text will appear that describes the button's functionality. If you want more detailed help text to appear under the button, click the blue balloon in the upper right-hand corner. Notice how the text is now more detailed. To switch the detailed text back to simple text, simply press the balloon again.